our bot lane. Thank you, Riv. Yes, double lift here after their victory. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. Uh, you guys pretty much stomped that game, so uh, I have a question for you, though. Nien, you know, coming to this, is a former teammate of yours. You're very used to other AD carry players wanting to play against you and wanting to prove yourself. Does it change, does it change at all uh, the mentality of the team or the strategy of the team uh, going into the game? You know, if you want to lane swap, you know what you want to pick against this guy. Do you try and use it against them at all? Um, maybe like previously it was, yeah, a little more prideful where I really wanted 2v2 people, but uh, this game we chased them 2v2 strictly because um, just the way the game was going, Rumble is a worse 2 v one than Maokai, and no, I don't think it really changes anything very much. I think I was kind of a little bit apprehensive because I think Callista completely destroys Sivir in lane. <laughs> I would say that matchup's like an 80-20 Callista favored lane, but... Um, Nyan and Dota didn't play very well, so I managed to get a pretty big CS lead and force them to swap away. So then I just kept chasing them 2v2 the whole game, and we just uh, completely crushed them, I guess. Um, their only saving grace that game should have been bottom lane, because Callista Nautilus is so good. But uh, they didn't play it out as well as they could have, so, yep. Yeah, you guys had a really clean game, strong shot calling. Uh, another, you know, one of the changes that you guys made in the offseason, Link leaving, has that affected your shot calling at all? You guys look as clean, as crisp as ever. You know, how accurate are the calls? How, you know, has, how has the transition been without, you know, Link there? Um, I think that transition has been pretty good, actually. Um, Poe Belter's really good. He's a carry mid laner, and he, he's just really strong. That game, he was doing ridiculous damage, and looking at the charts, he was, like, 37,000 damage done. He was like twice as much as the second most. So, I don't know. Uh, Pope Walter is really good for the team. And I think um, the team, the way we're operating now is just a lot better. I have to get used to it because uh, before we used to play off bottom a lot. Nowadays, we don't play off bottom like pretty much at all. So, it's just a new play style. And I think Afro and I are good enough of a bottom lane to play 2v3s like against the enemy jungler. Uh, without any jungle pressure ourselves, and it's just like a nice refreshing challenge. And now, like Zion and Pobelter can just really carry games because the meta is just top and mid, completely snowballing the game. As far as shot calling, has Pobelter stepped into the shot calling role as well, or uh, you know, does Afro do main do the main shot calling? Actually, Zion is our like big shot caller, like our overarching, and then uh, Afro is more micro oriented now. So before Afro would have like kind of an ambiguous duty. It's like, oh, well, you're a shot caller, but like. You don't really have a specialty. You just kind of, you know, go in whatever you want. Um, he's more micro-oriented, so like in team fights, you'll see him talking a lot. Uh, when we're doing rotations, he'll talk a lot. Zion is more just like, okay, uh, we're gonna group, you know, at this time or whatever. He's more big picture, and so with this sort of system, you can really pinpoint like whose responsibility is whose, uh, as opposed to before, which it was like very ambiguous, and you could tell we were really inconsistent because of that. So it's interesting because I never thought top laners could shot call, but I guess uh, in this meta, they really can, and it's really effective. Yeah, definitely effective this game. Uh, now, next game that you guys have is going to be TSM. The rivalry. Uh, Poe Belter's a new guy stepping into the rivalry, and he's also been a guy that's talked a little bit about how, you know, he doesn't think fans give him enough credit for being an excellent mid laner. Yeah. Uh, do you think that he is more excited to step into the rivalry and prove himself against Bjergsen, the another, number one in North America? Yeah, I think Poe Belter, I don't want to put out of pressure on the <laughs> poor guy, but he's got a lot of proof. So... I don't know, CSV vs CSM is always going to be hype, uh, and our coach actually also like enhanced the hype by, I, I don't know, he just talked to us about it, and it was, it's a lot of pressure, I guess, for us to win. Um, I guess we'll just have to see, because I think Eugene, or Paul Walter, he's super good, and I think he can be Bjergsen for sure. All right, we will have to see you tomorrow. Uh, until then, we're going to send it over to the guys at the desk now. Thank you, Kobe, and gentlemen, when I look at that game, Essentially what it comes down to or what it feels like is a simple outclass on the side of CLG over teammate across all lanes We saw yeah. advantages taken pretty early on and the thing is um, <clears throat> I think double effect said it really well It's kind of like a metaphor for the entire game. He talked about the bottom lane. and He's like yeah Callista and the Sivir it's like an 80 20 lane they're probably supposed to win it. He said, but they didn't play it very well. And you actually saw in team fights with like a 10,000 gold disparity. You're like, all right, but Sejuani ult hits and the like Maokai goes for a ride and like locks up everyone in it with the W and the ult's on and like the Ziggs ult comes by and like Nian's there for cleanup. But of course they got too far behind, right? Like they got outclassed individually, really good plays being made by CLG. And, you know, composition wise, the lanes should have been good. Composition wise, the team fights should have been good. 
but you got to see kind of the impact of player skill. Yeah, and it's kind of an unfortunate theoretical matchup when you're taking COG with Zion Spartan versus teammate with Cali Trolls, especially with the struggles that Cali Trolls has been having lately, where he will overcommit to things, he's having trouble finding the right spot on the map to be, whereas that is what COG excels on last split and this split. It's beating you to the punch rotation-wise, freezing the lanes in the right spot, and early on, by the time they swapped back, it was 75 CS to 50 and a one kill advantage for Zion Spartan. And then he knew exactly what to do with that because time and time again, Cali Trolls was making the wrong decision and Zion Spartan was making the right one. And this is a very interesting point to explore and Doublelift kind of hit on it in the interview there that uh, he feels mid and top are more of the carry-centric roles now as opposed to uh, the ADC in this current meta. Well, Zion Spartan, we've already said it so far, the split, one of the best top laners in North America. That's mm -hmm. a huge boon to CLG and, uh, you know, how they might do this split. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as, you know, top and mid lane go, I, I still say that CLG have top three in both those roles as far as solo lanes go. I mean, Double If Now for Mu, easily a top three bottom lane as well. I mean, there, there is a ton of just individual skill out here. As far as emphasis being on the top lane, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think we can still see successful AD carry focused teams. I mean, the funny thing is we're seeing marksmen show up in the mid lane anyway. So as far as like people who shoot arrows at you a whole bunch being successful, well, guess what? Pabalta proves that AD carries are quite good. But yeah, as far as, as far as, you know, focusing hard and getting your solo lanes ahead, sure, that works fine. I, I mean, we, we used to see teams focus a lot on top lane and it just wouldn't be very effective because their top lane is on an island. But it seems that teams are very focused on team fighting, much more than before, uh, compared to like six months ago or something. So that teleport to show up every five minutes is actually all you really need. So this, this Rumble, who just team fights every, every once in a while, is great to have all your gold on. Well, and I think that's the point, the idea yeah. that a, a a well-off top laner can influence the rest of the map with a teleport is finding itself more useful yeah. than yeah. just a straight up, you know, one or two kill advantage AD carry. Right, the team fights are, are farther apart, thus, you know, that if you only show up once in a while, be, you know, as a function of like relative to how often people fight, top laners are there more often. Yeah, exactly. It's necessarily about this specific game, but uh, one thing just with the holistic meta right now, with so many tanks being in the game, if we're thinking about Cinder Hulk junglers, Rek'Sai, and Gragas, uh, someone's got to kill them, right? <laughs> yep. And it's generally not the AD carry with when they're hitting their power spikes. So therefore, yeah. we're seeing more potency put onto those other soul laners because especially the mid lane yep. right now with the Cassiopeia, the Azir, or even the Varus, just repetitive poke before they can get engaged on are the ones that are actually able to kill the Cinder Hulk tanks. And I think that's one of the big reasons we're seeing mid and top focus right now. All intents and purposes, great game for CLG. I do want to hit on teammate real quick one thing, which is that we are seeing Porpoise Pops get shut down a little bit. And it's something that in the spring split we really applauded him for was his ability to apply pressure around the map, him and then uh, Slushy performing as a solo laner. This is not happening for them anymore. And it seems to, uh, it's, it's appearing to be a big issue for them when it comes to powering up to get to those team fights that we know they do perform well in. Yep. I mean, this was the thing is, you know, teammate were you know, almost a playoff team last split around. It was basically off of Slushy, hard carrying, and, and Porpoise having a string of very good games. Now, to be fair, teammates had a pretty hard schedule. Uh, to my recollection, it was TSM and CLG as uh, two of their opponents so they far. They played Impulse, Team Liquid, and now CLG. Yeah, okay, so they, they fought like three of the very best teams in the league, right? Like, CLG looked like the number one team in the league. Impulse, top four, last split around. Team Liquid also tied first place in the league. Like, these are very difficult opponents, and it's very easy to look out class. I don't think you know, teammate are one of those top four teams, but if we see them against, you know, easier opponents, they might look a bit better. Uh, as far as though their performances, yeah, okay, Slushy's still doing fine. He looks about as good as ever. He traded with Poelta. That's pretty good, to be honest. Uh, and we're not seeing Porpoise a lot on these early aggressive champions. We got to see a Rex side game, but he went back to Sejuani. And when you're against a really good team, against a slow early game jungler, you're not gonna have a lot of impact. And, you know, CLG closed him out. So, um, you know, if, if teammates still wants to have a similar performance where they go 6th, 7th, which I think they can do, and that's kind of what they look like to me, uh, they need to start doing that kind of stuff against, like, the new Cloud9, maybe Gravity, maybe uh, Enemy, things like that. All right. Well, as their schedule gets a little easier, we'll see if they can put some wins up on the board. Coming up after the break, we'll see if Team Dignitas can take down Team Dragon Knights in our fifth game. The North American LCS returns after this. Yeah, we're gonna learn the dance for that, guys. Okay. No, Tony doesn't know that. Dude, do it I, I already know. know. Oh, you do how you do it. It's like a one-handed. It's like me whip, right? No, no, no. Oh. You like throw your arm up like you're uh, like you're driving. Seventeen, it's, like, it's the whip. Like this. 
Very nice There's egg the bomb coming in. Doublelift goes down. They can get back onto Poe Belter. He may as well. Like Smithy tries to tunnel out. Watch this. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna go on these guys. They're on me. They're back on me. Okay, 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 okay. Set, 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 set. Cooking knowledge. Cooking knowledge. Left, 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 left. All right, that's fine. Don't right. mm, Should we do it? Kelly on a double lift. Whoa, baby! Oh. Going for the long ride on that one. Counter logic.